SCOTUS accepts case to challenge protection of public sector unions by states. This is of the government employees, by the government employees, and for the government employees being challenged. So it's public sector unions challenged at Supreme Court level. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is the first ever. Now, these are th th this is something that won't be regular. We, we, we won't necessarily be doing these every day, but sometimes we'll 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 do these and this is this is this is an i top this is the top story featured on iState.tv and today's top story is all about public sector unions perhaps seeing a significant reduction of the power that they have so this story uh well i i, I guess it starts with a guy named Mark Janus. Interesting name. Janus, by the way, Janus is uh, the name of a, a Roman god who uh, had uh, uh, faces, two faces, one face looking back, one face looking forward. It's Janus is the god of the new year. Uh, it's where you get the name, uh, the, the, the name January, our, our month of January, the, the first new year. Uh, that's, that's where you get that name. So that's an interesting coincidence i would say so mark janis who happens to be an illinois state work and recent worker recently brought a suit against the american federation of state county and municipal employees municipal employees that's a hard word for me to say over its ability enforced by the state to collect member dues from janis not the god uh not the roman god mark janis whether he wanted to belong to that union or not his suit is a challenge to the power of public sector unions to force membership and the accompanying member accompanying membership dues on government employees. The case became known as Janus versus American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees Council. So his lawsuit was enjoined by other parties, other state employees from different states, suing different public sector unions. The cases have been consolidated into one case and presented before the Supreme Court, which, and this is the news part of this, this is why this is an ITOP, which yesterday, Thursday, September 28, 2017, agreed to hear the case. Newly appointed Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch did not contribute to the decision to take the case by the Supreme Court. That's important a little bit later on. I'll explain to you why that's important. Janice's argument is that the state is that the, that the state coercing him to join a union and pay dues to that union violates his First Amendment right. He argues that well, well, since public sector unions use their dues monies to help pay for political contributions to candidates and parties, the state is violating his First Amendment right by making him support political action, which goes against his belief. So Janus and others involved in this case, as well as the ones joined with his, want to overthrow the Supreme Court ruling in 1977, in Abood v. Detroit Board of Education, in that case, SCOTUS ruled that mandatory public sector union fees were not, I repeat, not a violation of the Constitution because the fees are simply your contribution to pay your fair share for collective bargaining that benefits you. So an attempt was made to overthrow that ruling in 2016. This is where the Gor Gorsuch information becomes important. In that case was called Friedrichs versus California Teachers Association. But that ruling came down to a 4-4 tie as it happened just after the death of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Gorsuch, it is assumed, would be the deciding vote in that decision. So, so Team Janus told the press before this ruling was announced that the court should take this case, quote, the court should take this case to overthrow, throw, overrule Abood and declare fees unconstitutional, referring to mandatory public sector fees. 
it is telling that or public sector union fees. It is telling that the argument made here is not against the mandatory joining of public sector unions if you want to work a government job, nor is it against the very practice of coercing payment to these unions regardless of whether the monies raised go to pay for political campaigns or not. The notion that the government mandates that everyone who works for the government be part of a protected organization, which, which is essentially a de facto state institution, should be anathema to anyone, even, even within the nation-state paradigm, who imagines that the government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. So in this case, the government is of the government employees, by the government employees, and for the government employees. And they have a powerful state institution, public sector, sector unions, to assure that those who pay for the salaries and benefits of the government employees will have to pay more for these salaries and benefits and have little if any say in whether the arrangements made between the state, the government, and the state, the public sector unions, is one that they would approve. That's right. They're locked out of that negotiation. Regardless, here's hoping SCOTUS does us all the favor of extending the length of our leash just a tad by striking down the power of the state to coerce the employees of the state to fund a state institution, the public sector union, to lobby the state to pay the employees more money and uh, grant them more benefits, all of which increases the rate at which the state will be forced to raid the coppers of the citizens to pay for the ever-increasing salaries and benefits of the people who make the state possible in the first place, the government employees. Now, I have uh, posted the, the exact wording of the ruling in the article that this uh, video is based on, the article that I wrote on iState.tv. And as usual, the link for the article will be in the description as well as the comment section just to make sure you don't miss it. So I am Paul Gordon. And I am with iState.tv, and this has been your inaugural iTop. If you like this video, before be sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And above all else, hit the bell. Hit that bell next to the subscribe button to make sure that you get the latest updates for when we do the latest show. Like today, for instance, instead of just doing one video, bada boom, bada bing, you got two videos. So we'll see you. My name is Paul Gordon, and I'm with iState.tv. We will see you, uh, surely. We will see you the next time we do a video.